Welcome back, my friends. Today, we're walking through a home that has seen it all. Fire damage, mold, termites, asbestos, and more. And we're taking you behind the scenes as we discuss the restoration process for this severely damaged property. You'll hear about the extent of the damage, and we'll break down the step-by-step -step plan to bring this home back to life. But first, here's Jill to give you a quick rundown of what happened here and what we're working with. Hey everybody, we're here in Maryville, Arizona, and this is our latest project. Um, we had a lightning bolt strike the neighboring homes palm tree, and uh, it caught fire. The fire department came out to put the fire out on the tree. Little did they know that the embers had basically dropped onto the rental home next door. We're flying. Uh, the next door home is a total a disaster, a uh, total loss, but our project is actually the neighboring home where the carport and the interior of the home suffered some fire damage and some smoke damage. As you just heard from Jill, this home has faced some serious issues, but we're ready to tackle them head on. And stick around to the end because we're also gonna share the first three things you need to do if you ever find your own home with fire or water damage. And if you're finding value in this video, do us a favor, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps us get the word out about our podcast, where we bring you valuable content weekly to help you take care of your Arizona home. From simple maintenance tips to deep restorations like this one, we've got you covered. Now, let's get into this home restoration story. Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus, and this is State 48 Homeowner. Hey everybody, we're here with Joe Harden from Lotus Restoration Services, and we're out here in Maryville, Arizona at a luxury home. <laughs> it will be a nice home when we're yeah. done with it. So this is a home that uh, has a lot of different examples of what we would look for in restoration. And so this is a home that uh, suffered a fire a event. It was actually the neighbor's home that suffered a fire event. So let's talk through that. A neighbor's home caught fire. It was a lightning strike in the palm tree. Absolutely. That home is pretty much a total, total loss. loss. And yet it came over into the carport. There's a lot of other issues in the home. Yeah. Let's talk through those. So HVAC system was on at the time of the fire and the resident that lives in this home was an elderly woman. Um, she's great. She's doing fine. But uh, the family thought it was best that we come in and do the remediation and cleanup for the smoke damage uh, with her being in another uh, place to live. So she's been moved out of this home and this home has not had any real work or rehab done in it probably in the last, what, 40 years? 40, 50 years. <laughs> so it's definitely an interesting home. Um, it has a lot of things going on other than just the fire related issues. It has. Um, and we're seeing a lot of data things. We're seeing, you know, like electrical outlets that don't have grounds at them. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the shower. There's a shower that uh, is a stand up shower in the master area, what you would call the master area, I would suppose. It, uh, it has a leaky pan and it's probably been leaking for, I don't know, a good 15 to 20 years. So there's some uh, wood rot, there's some microbial growth uh, in that area. And um, our goal is that when we come in and start this project, we're gonna also be doing the renovation of both of the bathroom. Uh, there's some termite damage throughout the home, uh, which is pretty interesting. It doesn't really look like termite damage, but it is. Um, and then there's just some random areas where they've got uh, microbial growth uh, that needs to be taken care of. Picture on the wall was hanging in one of the bedrooms. Must have been some type of roof leak at one point in time, and the moisture was trapped behind the photo, and you can see that. It just kind of shows that we've got some undiagnosed things that kind of exist uh, when we have homes that are, are just occupied for a very long time. Yes. And this, these are the things that come up in inspections, but when you're living in a home for a while and you're not doing inspections on your own home, you're not moving photos around, you're not uh, really looking at, at some of these things that are happening, yep. you're not always aware. Exactly. And, and this is... One of the things that when we do put homes on the market and uh, the inspections come up, sometimes sellers are a little surprised and it's like, oh, well, these things do happen in your homes and sometimes you're just not aware. And on the termite things that we've seen, those are things that if people knew what they were looking for, then they, they, they might have noticed it. I don't know if it, they were behind couches or things like that, but uh, obviously <laughs> there were things that you could probably see. Now the secondary bath, let's talk about that. That that one is a little bit different. Yes. Uh, because uh, it, it's just a way that they were built differently. So secondary bath is a hall bath uh, just off the two bedrooms. And the way that bathtubs were designed back in the late 50s, early 60s 
where they would put in the cast iron tub and they would only run the tile surround up about four inches around wherever the, the watermark would be. Um, so you'll see in the videos, the uh, tile is, it's a little dilapidated. It needs to come out. There's some water damage there over the years. And so that shower, that uh, bathroom, we're going to convert that into a, a full tub and shower when we get to that point. Some of the other code issues that you talked about were yeah. the electrical upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely some electrical upgrades that need to be done in this house. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that the homeowner didn't realize was that there's also some code violations. Um, there's bars on the windows and those are no longer allowed in Maryville. So when we do the exterior paint of this home, we'll be removing the bars as well. Yeah, and it's, you know, a lot of people don't realize that the danger that that is, I mean, you're supposed to be able to get out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, this is, here's an example of where fire, the, the fire department was able to get in the home yes. um, because they couldn't uh, make access through the door. They had to kind of come in through the window to make sure that everybody could, that there were no occupants in the home. Uh, the fire department is not going to have guesswork going on. And, uh, you know, the window over there, no one's getting in or out. Or out. And yeah, that. The reason why we have bars on the windows is to make sure nobody gets in, but unfortunately they can't get out either. And if, if the fire is over here in the kitchen and that is the only way out and you don't have the keys to that security door. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. And so, yeah, we don't want to have those bars on the windows. Yeah. So um, let's talk about uh, asbestos. <laughs> So this house uh, is pre, obviously pre-1980. Anything pre-1980, uh, as a rule of thumb, we're gonna test for asbestos. Anything pre-1978, we're gonna test for lead. This house tested negative for lead. However, it did test positive for asbestos in the drywall uh, materials that are hung in this home. So with this being a fire job and the carport being affected, it also affected the roof of the home. So we're gonna have to peel back half of the roof of the home but then we're also dropping the ceiling in the living room area because the, the level of heat and intensity that the fire took on has likely damaged the insulation of this home. So we're gonna be replacing the ceiling and the insulation and then half of the roof of this home as well. And then uh, as you guys were looking at the asbestos, there was a, a difference between the two halves of the house. And here in the kitchen, they went to look for the asbestos and couldn't find it because we're plaster here. Yeah. And yet over on that side of the house, just slightly skew or a few feet over. Drywall. Yeah. So half of the house has a plaster ceiling and then half of the house is basically drywalled out with uh, drywall that's uh, contaminated with asbestos containing materials. Do you think they did that because it, this is the kitchen and they built it different? It's just, I don't know. I, you know, you just never know. It's definitely the original footprint. It doesn't look like they added anything onto this home. It's just very unique. Yeah. <laughs> Any other projects going on with this? Uh, it's going to get all new carpeting. Um, it's going to get which all is, new. Which is good. I mean, it's a little dated. It is. The, you know, the green and the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the blues and the tans. Um, it's also going to get a full kitchen remodel. So we're going to be coming in here and just basically removing all of the kitchen uh, cabinets. We may open up the back wall. We're going to be moving the laundry room because the laundry room is kind of an awkward position. Okay. It's it's actually the laundry room is off of the master shower. So we're going to be opening up some walls and putting in some uh, sliding glass doors and and making some major upgrades so that the homeowner can basically list the home. It's it's time for the homeowner to age in place in a facility, and it's just a much safer environment for her. Um, from what her family uh, describes to us. And uh, it's time for this house to have a facelift and a makeover mm -hmm. and a new family moving in. We'll be excited. Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus, and I don't want to buy your house unless you really want me to. For the last 25 years, we've been helping people just like you navigate all their options when looking to buy and sell. We gather all your options in one place and do all the homework for you so you can make the best decision for you and your family. Our team offers a one-stop solution. We work to gather as many offers as possible for you to help you make the best decision. You don't have to worry about repairs, commissions, or timing. Need flexibility? We've got you covered with flexible closing options. So whatever condition your home is in, we're here to help. And for whatever reason you might be thinking about selling, call us first, let us help you navigate all of your options. Whether you need to remove a contingency, sell fast, or get the highest price possible, we are here to find the right solution for you. 
So if you're ready to explore your options, contact me today. Let's figure out the best way to serve you. All right, so Jill, let's say we've got a fire or a flood. What do I want to do? Well, if it's a fire, the first thing you're going to do is call 911. What's that number? 911. Okay. Once the flames are out, then give Lotus Restoration Services a call. We'll come out, we'll evaluate the situation. If it's claim worthy and worth filing a claim, we'll look at your declaration pages and walk you through, walk you through the process of filing a claim. And that, that's an excellent point because most people are going to call their insurance company first. Yes. And that may be a mistake. It may be a mistake, especially in today's day and age when, when rates are so high and people are having issues getting coverage in general. So, yeah. and then thirdly, um, if for some reason it is a claim and it's best for you to be relocated from the house while the repairs are being made, we can help with that transition as well. And we, what we don't want to do is just in fear of, I need, I need a place to go, go and uh, find a place. That, oh, I, I can find a short-term place that's only a six-month lease and go sign a six-month lease and then later find out that I am doing an insurance claim and the insurance company is probably getting me out somewhere and now I'm stuck in a six-month lease. Yeah, and honestly, sometimes in these fire jobs, I mean, it, it may look like it's a six-month process, but it may be up to a year depending on the type of damage that's in the home, even with water damage. Um, in the event, if you have a flood, then you're going to want to turn off the water or call Lotus Restoration Services and we'll walk you through the process of turning off the water to your home or your business. And then uh, we'll evaluate it and basically use the same steps of mitigation. Is it cost effective? Is it a cash deal? Is it claim worthy? You know? and, and when we say is it claim worthy, there's a lot of factors that come into play. I mean, what size is the deductible and how much damage are we talking about? And is it worthy? Uh, do it claim okay. is it is it going to have an effect on our premiums and then when we go to list the home in the future and then we're going to have to declare that we've got a claim history um, you know is it is it worth it we'll weigh our pros and cons and decide if we're actually going to put in a claim exactly exactly and then you're going to help with all those kind of we hold the hand of the customer and walk them through the entire process from start to finish and you've got an incredible history of working with insurance companies and pretty much every insurance company that's out there. Yeah, and that makes me really proud as a business owner in the industry that I'm in because um, we do. We have an impeccable reputation of doing what's best for our customer and, you know, just really trying to get them a whole. So if people need to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do that? They can give us a call at 480-500-5481. And uh, do you guys have a website? We do. It's at www.lotus.services.az.com. Well, thank you so much. Jill. Thank you. It was great to see you guys. Thanks for joining us today. If you like videos like this one, make sure you take a sledgehammer to that like button. Join our restoration crew by clicking subscribe. And don't forget to ring that doorbell icon so you won't miss any of our upcoming projects. It's because we're posting new content weekly. It will keep you informed about valuable information for homeowners, the latest on the real estate market, and news about the East Valley community. So go make it a great day. Thanks for spending time with us this week at State 48 Homeowner, the ins and outs of owning an Arizona home. You can connect with us for more information, submit topics you'd like us to further discuss. You can see relevant videos, give us feedback, answer your real estate questions, and more at state48homeowner.com.